Hello Internet and welcome back to Dark Diet here with another episode and the final episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. In the previous episodes I've started off at the very beginning of the game, well not right at the beginning but where you get her entering your poem for the first time. I've already done that, I decided to skip it just to save some time. So this is day two and we've written a poem for Natsuki and this text has changed. So let's take a look and see what's gonna happen. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. <sighs> hear Natsuki out- <laughs> I sound like a fucking horse. I hear Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. You looking for something in there? Freaking Monica! She never puts my stuff back in the right spot! What's the point in keeping your collection organized if someone else is just gonna mess it up? Natsuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga. You read manga, right? Ah. Uh, sometimes. Manga is one of those things where you can't admit you're really into it until you figure out where, <laughs> where the other person stands. It's it's kind of like, um, you know, midget porn. Um, not that, not that I would know anything about that. How do you know anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face, you fucking weep. What's that supposed to mean? Just because I wanted to go into the anime club doesn't mean I'm automatically a weeb. I, I see. There's a lone volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is! Natsuki snatches it out of my hand. She then turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, oh, much better! Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world! I know that feel, I'm looking at my, the most irritating thing in the world right now! I get a closer look at the box set she's admiring. Ah, uh, Fae Girls? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic or it's simply shit. If you're gonna judge, you can do it through the glass on that door. She points to the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging or anything. I didn't even say anything. It was a tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, Steve. Consider this a lesson straight from the literature club. Don't judge a book by its cover. In fact... Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm gonna show you exactly why! She, sho she shoves the book right into my hands. Ah, uh, I stare at the cover. Features four girls in colorful attire, striking animated feminine poses. Hmm, I wonder if this could be a reference to anything. Hmm, it's exceedingly m m mo, exceedingly mo moe. I'm gonna have to ask my my weeb friend about that. What that <laughs> what that means? Cause I've got no clue. Don't just stand there. Ah, Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the window sills. She pats the ground. She pats on the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs won't work. You can't read at the same time like that. Bitch, yes you can. We did it with Yuri. Eh, why is that? Uh, I guess it's easy to be close together like this. D -d Don't just say that. You make me feel weird about it. And Suki crosses her arms and scooches an inch away from me. Sorry. I didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. Open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space, or she hopes I won't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Well, how long has it been since I read the beginning? Hmm? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes after I finish the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Uh, I am, but nothing's really happened yet, so I can talk at the same time. Looks like a... It looks like it's a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life affair. I kind of grew out of these, since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. So... What should I expect from this? Is there going to be a plot? Well, obviously, dickhead! You think I would enjoy something that didn't have a plot? I mean... Well, I guess I know what you're saying. A lot of the beginning is about simple things. Like, there's a really funny chapter where they're obsessed with the guy at the ice cream shop. But that just helps you get to know the characters. And then besides, it's still entertaining. But later on, there's all kinds of drama. Like when they get into all their backstories and when some of the romance starts to happen. That's really what makes it so good. 
There are so many touching parts. Ah, is that so? It sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. <laughs> hey, wait! What's that supposed to mean? Ugh, Natsuki gives me a little shove. Uh, I just meant that I haven't... I just meant that I haven't yet seen you at your full potential. Hmm, good save. After all, I have the power of God and anime on my side. Ah, uh, this chapter seems like it's about baking. This is just a guess, but is there a lot of baking in this manga? Well... Natsuki pauses for a moment as if she doesn't want to admit something. Yeah, what does that matter though? It doesn't. I was just trying to ascertain what this is going to be about, okay? You just got to chill. Since you enjoy baking too, right? That's just just a coincidence. I just like making cupcakes. Just happened to get into baking around the same time I got this manga. Like I would ever get into anything because it's in a manga. I feel bad for anyone that impressionable. <laughs> Definitely not a coincidence. I guess that explains Natsuki's interest in baking. Still, of all the hobbies to pick up from a manga, that's definitely one of the better ones. Not to mention, she's really good at it, so who am I to judge? Oh, here's one of the CGs, and here's one of the pictures that I see all the time when I'm launching up Doki Doki on Steam. Because it fetches... Like, when you when you open up a game on Steam, uh, there's, a, there's a picture in the background, and the way it works is that it takes the pictures from the store page, and it uses those as the background, so it kind of has a, it has a list of different images, and it's just random chance which one gets displayed. But I'm rambling again, who really cares about that? We read on for a few more minutes. I finished a couple chapters at this point. Are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not. Even though you're just watching me read. Well, I'm fine with that. If you say so, you creepy bitch. Like, she's just looking at me while I'm reading. I guess it's fun sharing something you like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Huh? The fuck's a friend, you fucking faggot? Hmm? You don't? Um, that's not... Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Did you know Robin Hen? For well, fuck's sake, jeez. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Hmm. Like I could never get my friends to read this. They just think manga is for kids. I don't even bring it up without them being all like, uh, you still haven't grown out of there yet? Makes me want to punch the right in the face. Gah! Uh, I know those kinds of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitated towards the other losers over time. But it's probably harder for someone like you. Hmm? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. I am a fucking weeb. Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica was kind of a jerk about it. Ah! I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. You egocentric bitch! Maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? So? What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> Jeez, that's enough! Are you gonna keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. I flip the page. Suddenly, Natsuki starts laughing. <laughs> I totally forgot that happens! Natsuki puts a finger on one of the panels. Minori is my favorite character. You always feel a little bad for her since she's so unlucky. But it gets especially bad when... Uh, I shouldn't be talking about that yet. Just finish this chapter. Natsuki's voice sparkles with excitement. It's a stark contrast to her usual bossy tone. But if she's not used to sharing her favorite manga with her friends, I can understand why. It's hard to express in words the feeling you get when connecting with someone like that. And being able to provide that to Natsuki, for whom it's a rare experience, the thought makes me smile a little to myself. Okay, everyone. Eh, are you all ready with today's poems? Oh, come on. Could you tell me be any worse? Sorry, I just need to make sure we have enough time. Though you do look pretty cozy over there. <laughs> eh? Uh-huh. Natsuki suddenly noticed how close she's got it to me. She hastily slides herself a good 12 inches away from me. Let me just, uh, convert that to centimeters for all you non-imperial friends. Okay, it's it's about like a full, about a full ruler length. So like a full 30 centimeter ruler length away. Okay. Alright, guess I'll stop here for now. I close the book and hand it towards Natsuki. You're just giving it back? Do you want to know what happens? Uh, yeah, but that's what the internet is for. I can just read it online. Monica just said... 
Don't be a dumbass. Just take it home with you. Eh? Is that really alright? I said that mostly because I didn't really plan on using my spare time to read this shit. Well, of course. It would take forever to finish it if you didn't take it home. Just finish that one before tomorrow so we can sell the next one. And if it gets bent, I'll kill you. By tomorrow? Jesus Christ. Just because you have free time. I only, get part, I only got part way through the volume so far. I might fall behind on some shows if I try to get through this. But I suppose that's a necessary sacrifice in exchange for seeing Natsuki's enthusiastic face. Or am I more scared of what will happen if I don't finish it? Alright then. I stand up, I return to where I put my stuff and carefully slip the book into my bag. Huh? Okay, well, let's have the things I don't like. First of all, um... Natsuki rereads my poem. Never mind, I don't feel like giving you my opinion. Eh? What's the point of sharing it in the first place? Or at this one, I could have been doing other things. Like watching anime so that I could catch up before you forced me to read your shitty manga. Uh... In fact, remember how I said I wanted to read your poems? That's what I had in mind when writing this. I want to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said. Uh, well, I'd be more comfortable sharing my poem if yours was really bad. You're supposed to show me some dumb poem and make me go, Ha! Huh? Well, it's not that great, but let me show you what real literature looks like. And you wouldn't ruin it. Hope you're happy. So in other words, you're saying it's actually pretty good. Ah! Atsuki's retort gets caught in her throat. Uh, you're so... Uh, you, you just... You don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that you don't have to go announcing it to the world like you're all self-important. Pretty sure you never actually said that. I say that mostly to myself. Atsuki must really hate me or something. Can't figure out if it's a winner or a loss that she liked my poem. In any case, you still need to show me yours, right? <sighs> Fine, whatever. Sure, I guess. Only because Monica will make me if I don't. I hand Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. I like it, Steve. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, jeez. No, no. It's, it kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. And she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. <laughs> if if you say so, Monica. Yep. By any chance, have you read anything by Shel Silverstein? Eh? Maybe a long time ago. He's famous for telling all kinds of stories in just a few words. His poems can be funny and daring or even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines long. They might even feel like they're written for kids, but you think about them. They can express views of the world that would apply to anybody. I see. So yes. So you're saying that Natsuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert, but you probably won't find much feeling in her poems. They might be easier to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. So I can see why it would be your kind of poem to explore. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. it can take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. Love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the same way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Ha ha. Uh, ha ha. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know. I see. Well, let's read it then. Yet again, we arrive at the argument scene, and that's going to be Natsuki. I haven't actually seen what happens here, so this is going to be cool. Um, Yuri, you're really talented. Eh? Well, but Natsuki has a point. I think that I rack my brain in an attempt to back myself up. I think that conveying feelings with few words can be just as impressive as well. It lets the reader's imagination take over, and Natsuki's poem did a really good job at that. Yeah, yeah, it did, didn't it? Haha, <laughs> chase how much you know. That's not... Natsuki, I think that's enough. Huh? Me? But you were so mean to me. Natsuki's voice whines. Look, what we talked about yesterday was right. Writing is a really personal thing, and sharing it can definitely be hard. Looks like we learned that today. Even small criticism can lead to something pretty heated. I glance over my shoulder. Sayori is nodding vigorously. Yeah, so you don't need to feel threatened. You're a great writer, Natsuki. Oh. Natsuki's voice gets caught and surprised. 
Thanks for noticing. She finally mutters that, barely audible. Yuri. Yuri looks at me dejectedly. With a face like that, I can't help but feel bad for her as well. I'm sure that Natsuki didn't mean everything she said. So you don't need to feel threatened either. Well, if you say so. Hey! Is it like you need to apologize for me, Steve? Sheesh! Natsuki takes a breath. I... The thing about... Uh... Natsuki glances around the room. But everyone stop staring at me! And surprisingly, Natsuki has a harder time with it than she boasted. Sayori and Monica look away. Hmm. Anyway, the thing about your boobs, I didn't mean it, okay? That's all. Natsuki looks away, avoiding eye contact with anyone. Yeah, you're naturally beautiful, Yuri. Sayori! Uh, I'll go make some tea. Eh, I was just trying to help. I'm sure she appreciated it, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. Well, now that we're past that, everyone's read each other's poems, right? Hope it was a worthwhile experience for everyone. Especially you, Steve. And to be honest, it's a nice change of pace from the lazing around we got a little too used to. Haha. <laughs> ah, so my joining the club was responsible for ruining the, the atmosphere. No, no, not at all, not at all. There's still time before we go home, so we'll all relax for a bit. Of course, besides chatting, we do literature related things in the club room. So maybe you can take the chance to pick up a book or do some writing. After all, that's what the club is for. I disagree, Monica. Eh? About what? That's not the most important thing about the literature club. The most important thing is having fun. Haha, <laughs> of course. Well, I guess that's why you're the vice president, Sayori. Heh <laughs> In the end though, Monica's right. Being in the literature club probably means I can't spend all my time doing shit all. Like real life. But in the end, I guess it's been worth it so far. Alright, so, welcome to day three, and let's figure out what other changes there are. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. It's not long before Natsuki comes up to me expectantly. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, I kept my promise. I pull out the first volume of Parfait Girls out from my bag. Natsuki takes it from my hands and quickly turns it over, presumably to check for wrinkles. Hey, I'm not that careless, calm down. I don't mind all the time, you know. I uh, just wanted to make sure. Can you blame me for being paranoid? I give people my manga every day, you know. That's true. I don't blame you. Well, anyway, let me pull this one back. I'm gonna go and get the next one, okay? Natsuki makes her way to the closet. I follow. So you're gonna tell me everything you thought, right? What did this volume leave off again? I forget. Ah, the chapter ended when Minori and Alice found... Monica! Natsuki's voice resonates from inside the closet. Eh? I peer inside. All of Natsuki's books are lined up on the top shelf. Did she move my manga again? Ah, sorry, sorry. The teacher got mad at me for taking up so much space in that closet. So I had to move some stuff around and clean up a little. It's all still there, I just had to organize it a bit. <gasps> the top shelf is far above Natsuki's head. She makes a futile hop, trying to figure out how to reach her manga. Jeez, this is so inconvenient! Moving all this back down. There's plenty of room on these shelves. And besides, they're really pretty to look at when they're all lined up. Why would you waste that at the top shelf? Ah, uh, Natsuki, there's a stool on the wall there. In the closet, there's a collapsible stool that's hanging on the wall. If you want, I can reach up there and hand them to you. I can get them myself. Natsuki grabs the stool from the wall and unfolds it. You think I'm too short or something? I mean... I'm a strong, independent woman, and I don't need no man! I knew it! Well, you know what? Just watch me. Natsuki hops onto the stool, which ends up being a little wobbly because of its collapsible design. Ah! Uh, Careful. I know what I'm doing, shut up! Standing on the stool, Natsuki's fingertips reach the top shelf. The stool would be enough for me to easily grab the books, and Natsuki is being a dickhead as usual. Ah! Uh, Natsuki uses her fingers to scoot one of the smaller boxes to the edge of the shelf. See? Yeah! The box suddenly tips. Natsuki barely catches it before it falls to the floor. The stool wobbles. Ah! Losing balance, Natsuki hops off the stool. Thankfully, she was able to stay on her feet. She hops the box triumphantly. There! Having almost fell, Natsuki's a bit shaken up. Jeez. No need to prove yourself to me. There's no way you'll be able to get the bigger boxes like that. I can reach them, so just... I said I can do it! I don't want your stupid help, okay? Ah. <sighs> I'm gonna get a chair, so just head on. 
And Suki forces her way past me out of the closet. Let's see. The classroom chairs have the desks attached, so they're too inconvenient to fit in into the closet. Aha! And Suki trots over to the teacher's desk, which has a computer chair behind it. She rolls it on its wheels back to the closet. Uh, it's a little dangerous since the chair swivels and rolls, but I've already learned my lesson, so I keep my mouth shut. Ah, wait, hush! Natsuki climbs onto the chair, then slowly balances onto her feet. Since she refuses my help, I take a seat with my back against the side of the doorway and simply watch. Oh, here's the other CG. Haha! Ah there we go! See? I can easily do it now! Natsuki grabs a stack of manga and bends down to put it on the shelf below. Ah! The chair swivels. Natsuki catches herself on the shelf. What are you doing? You really saw the chair standing instead of sitting and doing nothing? So now you want my help! Who was it that- who told me not to help? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Hold the chair while Natsuki reaches back up. Huh, I can- I can almost see up her skirt? We've got a potential income stream if you know what I mean. Gah! I force myself to turn away. Natsuki seriously didn't think this through. Once she realizes I'll be dead. Hup. Natsuki wraps her arms around the parfait girl's box set. Easily the largest one on the shelf. Oh, heavy! Hey Steve! Uh, don't think I can bend down without falling. I can take this one. Eh, then I have to let go of the chair. That's fine. Just for a second. Hurry up. All right. Just, let me just stand up. I slowly release my grip from the chair. What do you mean stand up? Natsuki looks down at me. Why are you all the way back? Eh? Natsuki looks like she just realized something, but she'll lose her balance if she moves. Natsuki, the box? What are you looking at? I'm trying to look at her. Natsuki's legs shake. I, I'm not. I, I was just. Give me the box already. Natsuki, don't try to move. Just give me the box, woman. You. You perf. You set me up. Go away. Get out. But. I do it myself. Uh -huh. The chair suddenly swivels beneath Natsuki's feet. Natsuki. Yeah. The scene turns to chaos in a split second. The chair flies from under Natsuki's feet. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands and the books go flying! I got you! Crash. The full force of Natsuki's body against me throws me to the ground. A whole bunch of books pelt me in the face! Natsuki tries to shield herself with her own arms as her face lands straight onto my chest. Ugh! Oh, fuck! Although you're not too heavy, so it's it's alright. Ugh! Oh, my right arm and my back seriously felt the impact. Ugh! Oh, it's... Slowly, Natsuki comes to her senses. Gah! She presses her arm straight into me to prop herself up. Eh? Natsuki seems to realize that it's not the floor that's beneath her. Gah! Gah! Gross! Gross! Gah! A fist pounds into my chest. Natsuki then hoists herself to her feet. Well, what were you thinking? You sicko! Everything okay over there? I heard a loud noise. Monica suddenly peers in. Monica! See what happens when you put the manga on the top shelf? Are you trying to kill your club members or something? Jeez! Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. Seems like your most recent club member is a total perfect. So I hope you're happy. I didn't. Somehow it's impossible for me to explain this whole bizarre situation to Monica. I didn't do anything, I swear. She's all making it up. I know, I know. Don't worry. Monica says that quietly to me. Looks like I'm off the hook. Oh no. Am I? Eh? Look down. Natsuki is kneeling on the floor, holding one of the books that are scattered all over. There's a large diagonal crease along the page that she's desperately trying to smooth out. Ah, uh, it must have landed on the page. Natsuki tries a bit more to fix the crease, but she can't get it out. Suddenly, she gives up and slams the book shut and throws it to the floor. Instead of continuing to yell, she just lowers her head. I don't understand, like, what's the big deal about it creasing? It's all like you're gonna resell them in the future, who cares if it's got a couple of creases along it? You said it yourself, once you read a manga, that's it. You don't really read it again. <laughs> Natsuki, are you? No! Natsuki voice squeaks. I see tears in her face. Uh, I'll help get the crease out, okay? It's partially my fault, so it's not at all your fault, Steve, if Natsuki wasn't being such a dickhead in the first place. Natsuki shakes her head, still looking down. No, I don't even care that much. I'm just having a really bad day today. Natsuki sobs again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. 
I really didn't mean to. It, it, it's fine. Is there anything you want to talk about? Natsuki shakes her head. Just every day is so hard. I just want to come to the club then. Natsuki falls silent again. I can't press her, so I only do what I know how to do. Alright. Well, I'll help clean this up. And I'll move the rest of your manga for you. Ah. Uh, I pick up volume 2 of Parfait Girls. We'll set this one aside. This will help cheer you up a bit, right? We can get started on it once I'm done here. Suki looks up with her glossy eyes. Her lip quivers. Oh, you're really nice to me. Eh? That sounds really strange coming from Natsuki. I didn't expect it at all. Well, I'm just treating you like a friend, you know? Mm. Natsuki lowers her head and stifles another sob. Not sure what happened to her today, but being nice is the least I can do. The next couple minutes are silent between us as I begin gathering the scattered books. I make sure to slip them into the box in their correct order. After a little bit, Natsuki starts helping. It isn't long before we're done, and I hoist, and I hoist the box back onto the shelf where Natsuki wanted to put it. Then, I grab the stool and quickly finish moving the rest of the books from the top shelf. Alright, that should do it. I hop off the stool. Natsuki averts her gaze. Thanks. <laughs> it's, it's nothing, don't worry about it. Natsuki is holding the volume one set aside in her hand. Alright, I'm ready. Good. Even if you weren't, I'd make you anyway. You're taking responsibility for what you said. The, the thing about cheering me up. If you insist. We sit in the same spot as last time, and I open the second volume. Before we go on, though, it's actually... Interesting how much the game foreshadows what we learn uh, in Act 2, where Natsuki is being abused at home. And... If you don't do any of her actual poems in Act 1, you wouldn't have a clue. I mean, I didn't have a clue on, about any of this until Act 2 when I started reading some of those poems, right? And I mean, also, once I looked on the internet to figure out what all the poems meant. But that's besides the point. And another note to add is how Sayori, Yu uh, Yuri, and Monica all kind of demonstrate... or not demonstrate, what am I talking about? I mean... They all foreshadow, you know, what's happening to them, what kind of a situation they're in. But Natsuki is the only one whose poems don't really show this at all. I mean, I'd looked at them the, over the last three episodes trying to take a look, but there's nothing. There's really nothing. We sit in the same spot as last time and I open up the second volume. Natsuki's mood quickly improves, laughing and pointing things out to me. She's surprisingly sharp, making note of a lot of subtle repeated jokes, jokes and background elements. In the end, I'm pretty impressed by, by how everything ties together in this manga. I guess Natsuki has a good taste after all. After some time, Monica gets our attention as usual and it's time to share poems again. Guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yep, never knew you sound more enthusiastic this time. Well, I'm starting to get into it, you know. <laughs> told you. Yeah, yeah. I return to my seat and slip the book into my bag. Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. But now she must have read it more than once. Uh, huh? Is it really that bad? No! No, no, it's not. It's good! It's really good, okay? There, I said it! Uh, this wasn't supposed to happen at all! Why can't you just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around! You're trying to impress me? Obviously! You think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Give me a break, you dickhead! Well, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you, you're- Natsuki's face freezes, like she just realized something. You, 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 you're trying to impress me? Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time. Then the poem slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. I, I have to use the bathroom. Red faced Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. Hey Steve, did you do something Natsuki? I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? No, I just told her that. My voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I could tell Monica that I'm trying to impress Natsuki. Hmm? Monica sees the poem lying on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She reads through it, her smile not fading from her face. Ah, see, you wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? I, I, I mean, not really? 
In fact, didn't you like your poem a lot the other day too? I'm surprised you know her taste so well already. Are you sure you're not cheating, Steve? Cheating? What do you mean by that? Oh, oh, that's good. I like the- <laughs> Man, I'd love this game. It's still got stuff left for me to figure out. Like right there. She's like, oh, are you cheating? And I mean, I, I am cheating because I've got a guide on my monitor over to my left, which I'm looking at to figure out what words uh, Natsuki likes. And the reason why Monica's all like, are you cheating in Natsuki's routes instead of Sayuri or Yuri's is because uh, Natsuki's list of words is actually a hell of a lot shorter than uh, uh, Sayuri's and Yuri's. Like, <laughs> I w at the beginning of this episode, before I started recording actually, I was trying to do it manually. I was like, hmm, what would Natsuki like? And I'd get one or two in a row, and then it would be Sayuri's word, or it would be Yuri's word, and then I'd have to start all over again. It's not very intuitive what Natsuki likes beyond a couple of words. That's basically what I want to say. That's that's what I'm trying to say. So I had to bring up the guide, and I had to look through. Sometime, like sometimes I had to go through word by word by word to see if it was on the list, and just keep going like that. Like. Natsuki's poems are actually pretty hard to write, so... <laughs> Freaking hell, man, this game! Never mind that, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't understand Monica's joke at all, but we do. Anyway, how do you think Natsuki feels about you? Oh, you don't need to answer that. It was just something for you to think about. Hey! Natsuki comes up and snatches the poem out of Monica's hands. Neither of us had noticed her re-enter the classroom. Did you read this, Monica? Of course, I liked it. Oh, she really saw reading things that aren't for you, you know. You have a bad habit of doing that. Eh? But Steve wrote this poem, and was supposed to share it with everyone, right? Oh. And Suki freezes. She apparently forgot that my poem is technically for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think Steve is done sharing this poem with everyone. It's like anyone else would want to read this, this piece of trash anyway. In fact, I'm just going to hold on to this. If you insist. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Ah, oh, never mind. Uh, Natsuki, I'll give you the poem, but that's still not very fair to Yuri. She hasn't gotten to read it yet. So what? Well, I guess Steve is right, Natsuki. It's not fair if you don't let everyone finish reading it. Fine. Natsuki returns my poem. It's not like she's gonna like it, though. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. That was my early copy as well, and you were gonna keep it. Gah. You know, I'm glad that you can appreciate this kind of writing. I mean, I know I was talking about that yesterday, but I've been, well, I've been enjoying sharing my writing with you, so, so consider, your so consider yourself lucky, okay? <laughs> well, thanks for being honest. Well, what's that supposed to mean? I'm always honest. Jeez, just look forward to tomorrow too, okay? All right, I will. Uh, um, are you still mad at me? Eh? For disrespecting Natsuki yesterday. Because reading this poem, now I know why you got mad at me. Because you, you prefer her writing over mine. That's not really true. Meaning when I disrespected her, I disrespected you too, didn't I? Oh no. Yuri! Might be reading into this a little too much. How could I be so stupid? I always let these things happen. Whenever I think before I speak, I just come off as awkward and unlikable. But if I speak without thinking, the things I want to keep inside come out and make people hate me. So please don't force yourself to be around me. I know this is what Monica wants, but it's not fair to you when you could be enjoying your time with Natsuki and Sayuri. Yuri! Please, it makes it easier for me if you don't express any concern. Besides, I have my books with me. That's all I need. Yuri smiles sadly and puts her head down on the desk. I'm frustrated. I don't hate her, but it's as if she's not capable of listening to me over her own thoughts. I sigh to myself. All I can do is accept that's how she is. If she wants to be left alone, then I have no choice but to abide by that request. Okay, so... Just before I continue going on with Natsuki, keep in mind that this is day 
four, I believe. I th that sounds about right, yeah. Anyway, I never realized at this, like, I never realized that it is possible when you're writing a poem to not actually have a word for, uh, I'm not sure if it's, if, if it's possible for Sayuri and Yuri, but it's definitely possible for Natsuki to not have a word that appeals to her in, like, one of the pages. I just spent like the- I swear, I just spent like the last 20 minutes trying to write a poem specifically for Natsuki. And, like twice, I got to close to the end or right at the very end, and the page literally wouldn't have any Natsuki words. And I was like, what? Because I never realized. And it's like what I was saying uh, a, f a little bit back about how there just really aren't that many words for Natsuki. And so there's this chance, I'm not sure exactly what kind of chance there is, because I'm not very good at probability, but there's definitely a chance of one of Natsuki's words not appearing. I also found out that, from the guide, that the way it works is that it it's works on points. If you exceed a certain amount of points with a girl, they will like your poem, and so it will appeal to them. So... When you write a word and the and one of the girls pops up, that's plus three points. Now, it goes from plus one point, from plus one point to all the way to plus three points. So some words will add two points to a girl, and some words will only add one point. And so you've got these specific barriers. For instance, if you don't exceed a certain amount of points for a girl, they won't like your poem at all. As you saw in the last episode where Natsuki just simply refused to read our poem and yeah I just I just found that kind of interesting but anyway we gotta finish this episode it's getting kind of long hey you eh I look up and see Natsuki next to me are you just gonna sit there and keep keep staring at nothing there isn't that much time so Ah, oh, sorry I didn't make I didn't mean to make you worry or anything yeah, it's not like I'm worried I was just Natsuki glances down at her side. She's holding a volume manga in her hand. That's right. Something just came up for a minute, but we can get started now. I won't make you wait any longer. Jeez. Now you're making me feel like a jerk. If something's bothering you, then you can just tell me to piss off and I will. I mean, I shame you didn't feel like talking about it or anything. She practically mumbles that last part. Nah, I'm probably making it seem like a bigger deal than it actually is. I've just been thinking about Sayori, that's all. S Sayori? Thinking about her? Yeah, she seems pretty down today, but she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh. Natsuki exhales. Well, first of all, you should really work on your phrasing, dickhead. But anyway, you're our best friend, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, and in that case, I think you should trust her a little more. If she needed you, then you would be the first person she would go to, right? Well, I guess that's true. I mean, some people just have those days. Can't always avoid it. If anything, she probably doesn't want you to worry about her because it's not important. Yeah, that's kind of what she says to me. Maybe it's not right for me to go against her wishes. Exactly. If she needs you to worry about her, then it'll be a lot more obvious. Yeah, I should have thought of it that way from the very start. That Suki fiddles with the book she's holding in her hands. She... she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Ah, uh, don't, don't get the wrong idea or anything. We've just been friends for a long time. It's normal to be worried about your friends. I mean, you were worried about me, so... I was not! Jeez! You're fine, then let's hurry and get started already. Yeah, yeah. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we show our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayuri. Let's see, let's see! You're certainly enthusiastic today for someone who was dissing my poems in all the other episodes of Doki Doki Literature Club. Of course! You know I like your writing. I'm just surprised. It seemed like you had a lot of trouble admitting that before. Well, well of course! I just had to put you in your place a little bit. It's not like... I mean, it's not like I was shy or anything stupid like that. Or jealous. I really wasn't jealous. Just because you happen to be a good writer? That's such a dumb thing to get jealous about. <laughs> uh, Suki, you're kind of talking to yourself. What? 
You're not very confident about your writing, are you? Eh? What are you talking about? My writing's obviously the best! Right? It took me a while to figure out, but I think I finally did. Maybe Natsuki acts so arrogant because she's trying to make up for her own insecurities. Is that like the internet, IRL? If she acts like she's the best, then other people might think that way too. Right? Steve? Please tell me that you like my poems. I don't care if you hate them. Just please tell me I'm the best. I just... I just really need to hear that from someone. I know I sound stupid, but there's a reason I never shared my poems before this. That's Suki. Because... Because nobody ever takes me seriously! What's the point of sharing my poems and people just laugh and say, That's so cute, just like you, Natsuki. Sometimes I don't want to be cute! But nobody understands that. I try really hard when I write. The style doesn't matter. The emotions are there. Why can't anyone see that? I just want... Natsuki trails off. Maybe it's because her lips started to quiver. I look down. Her fists are clenched really tightly. Hey, Natsuki, calm down. If you're not careful, you rip your own poem. I gently grab the poem with my own hand until she, until she relaxes her grip on it. I place it flat on the desk and smooth out the wrinkles that she put into it. But don't read it! Before I can pick it back up, Natsuki snatches the poem up from the desk. It's not any good, and I know you hate my poems, so you don't have to read this one, okay? But I want to read it, you bitch! Well, why? Because I want to! Just give it to me! Because I like your poems. I really do. But would I judge you for your style? It's not like my own style is anything crazy. I mean, it's true that the first time I read one of your poems, I didn't look much into it, but I know you better now. And it's wrong for Yuri to think your style is more amateur than hers. And Sayori, she always means well, but sometimes she's so focused on simple happiness that she doesn't understand what people really want. Yeah, I guess I never really thought about how hard it is for you. And I'm sorry if I was part of the problem. I understand now. You're not just cute, you're a lot more than that. Uh, Natsuki, you're doing it again. Once again, Natsuki clutches her poem a little too hard. She looks down, hiding her eyes from me. I never realized how difficult this was for her. But finally, she forces herself to extend her arms and set her poem on the table. Y you can read it. Just turn that way. I don't want you to look at my face right now. Okay, I will. Oh, this is a new poem as well. Oh my god. So we had Yuri's new poem. And now we have... Natsuki's new poem. Okay, this is cool. This is why I keep playing this game because it's just new content Because you tomorrow will be brighter with me around but when today is dim I can only look down. I look in is a little more forward because you look at me When I want to say something I say it with a shout, but my truest feelings can never come out My words are a little less empty because you listen to me and something when something is above me, I reach for the stars, but when I feel small, I don't get very far. My standing is a little bit taller because you sit with me. I believe in myself with all of my heart, but what do I do when it's torn all apart? My faith is a little bit stronger because you trusted me. My pen always puts my feelings to the test. I'm not a very good writer, but my best is my best. My poems are a little bit dearer because you think of me. Because you. Because you. Because you. Okay, I think... I don't think this poem is too difficult to understand. It's it's like a it's like a love poem. Although knowing these poems, knowing this game, there's probably something deeper that I'm completely missing because I can't understand poems. How many times do I have to say it? I'm dropped out of literature, like my literature class for a reason. Why are you looking at me like that? If you don't like it, then just say it. Fucking cunt. I won't get mad. No, it's, it's not that I don't like it. It was just a little surprise in the read. Uh, I guess I'm not used to hearing such nice things coming from you. But don't just say that, dickhead. What do you think the point of writing is? Expressing things that you can't just say. Yeah, I understand. I'm sorry for missing the point sometimes. I always mean well, and I'm happy that you showed this to me. I liked it. Well, yeah. Um, I'm a pro, so... That Suki mumbles, completely failing to sound confident like she usually does. Just remember that I can think these things sometimes too. You know, when you're nice to me, it's meaningful. Ah, I'm glad. Sensing Natsuki is satisfied, I start to hand the poem back to her. But as I do so, Natsuki takes my hands and pushes them back away. Her small, soft hands surprise me with their assertion. I don't want it. 
Eh? Why not? I just don't! Chase. I realize what Natsuki is doing. Unable to be honest, she's trying to give me the poem in a roundabout way. Well... Well, in that case, I'm gonna keep it then. Instead of teasing her, I choose to go along with it. Good. If you didn't, I would... Never mind. Just, I'm glad that you want it. Natsuki backpedals on her words and leaves it at that. Despite her best efforts to hide her expression, I can see her faintly smiling to herself. That's all for now, so... Go put her away before someone sees it, okay? Ah, uh, yeah. I'll go do that. That, I return to my seat so that I can put away Natsuki's poem. Yuri doesn't look too enthusiastic about spending time with me. I guess if she changes her mind, she'll come to me. But I should leave her be for now. Oh, okay, so now... <laughs> I love how... Uh, in the Yuri route, Natsuki is the one that's going to like, Oh, I don't want to read your poem, just go away. And now, now that we're in the Natsuki route, uh, Yuri is the one that's like, Oh, go away, I don't want you around me. So I guess all we can do is talk to Monica. Anyway, well, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I'll let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Sticking with the Natsuki style once more, I see. Hmm, you like Natsuki, don't you? It, that's... Oh, come on, Steve. It's awfully suspicious, so, you know. Spending time with her in the club room every day. Pretending to like the manga that she's into. Y you know how Natsuki is. If I don't indulge her, she'll end up hating me. Eh? No, I think you're misunderstanding, Steve. It's not like just... It's not like Natsuki just hates anyone who doesn't give her what she wants. Yeah, she's assertive, but she's not that selfish. In fact, I think you're the only one who's indulged her as much as you have. Is that so? I kinda knew that, but I just didn't want to admit it. So I just needed to ask one thing of you. Be careful, please. Atsuki is kind of unpredictable. A lot of times she doesn't even know what she wants. After all, she's the youngest one here. She might not even know how to handle her own feelings for properly. What I'm saying is, something bad happens, then it could end up damaging the club too. And you wouldn't do that to me, right? That's... I'm not sure how to respond to Monica. While I care about her in the club, it's also kind of unfair to bring that up. Well, you're smart. I'm sure you'll do the right thing. Monica smiles sweetly. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Uh, alright. Now, if you've watched my series, you already know that in... What ep episode 5, that's the one, episode 5, because I remember it so vividly because that's where Sayuri kills herself. And that spoofs me. So, in episode 5, I already went through Natsuki's, uh, like, what happens when Natsuki comes over to Steve's house. So, what I'm gonna do is, from this point, I'm gonna get her CGs for that house. And then, I'm gonna go into Act 2. And then, I'm gonna get into Act 3 and blah, 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 blah. Until I eventually get to right before the true end, where I'll you know, start recording again. So I'll see you all there. Here we are, finally at last, ready to take on the true end. I guess the meeting's over, huh? Yeah, looks like it. It's nice to see everyone getting along, isn't it? I think everyone likes you too, Steve. You think so? Well, everyone always seems to get along a little better with you around, Sayori. Oh, Steve, don't say something like that, it's embarrassing. Well, whatever. I was surprised when you told me you were starting a club, but I think you're pulling it off just fine. We're gonna make it the best club ever! Now that you joined, every day is gonna be so much fun! Hey Steve... And the music stops. I really wanna thank you. I mean, I'm really happy that you joined the club and everything, but the truth is, I already knew you were going to. Hehe. <laughs> There's actually something else. I wanted to thank you for spending so much time with us all. Oh, I think this is different! You work so hard to make each and every one of us happy. I don't remember this music either. You comforted us through our hard times, and you helped us get along with each other. Do you get it, Steve? Because I'm president now, I understand everything. You really didn't want to miss a single thing in this game, did you? Yeah, we definitely didn't get any of this in the original playthrough, so this is cool! You saved and loaded so many times just to make sure you could spend time with everyone. Only someone who truly cares about the literature club would go that far, but all along, that's all I ever wanted. For everyone to be happy and care about each other. Haha. <laughs> it's kind of sad, you know. After all you've done for us, there isn't much I can do for you in return. We've already reached the end of the game, so... This is where we say goodbye. Thank you for playing Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm gonna miss you, Steve. 
come visit sometime, okay? We'll always be here for you. We... We all love you. Oh my god. This is... This is giving me the feels, man! And this is just how it uh, originally ended as well. special day yeah all right so everyone in this credit scene should now be fully lit up unlike what it was last time where some of them were grayed out and huh, I guess I can finally say that Doki Doki Literature Club is over, for now at, at least, because there are hints in this game, based on what I've read online, that there may actually be a sequel in the works, or maybe not even a sequel, just a, a new game that could or that may or may not tie in with this actual game, which I'm keen for because this game was brilliant. It's just <laughs> it's one of those games where you need to actually uh like the best experience from it is when you don't play it when you don't read or watch anything about it beforehand like i did right i didn't know what i was getting into when i played this game all i saw were the steam pictures on the on the steam store page and that was it <laughs> i kind of knew it was a visual novel but even that was a bit iffy i don't know like what kind of visual novel it was and I think, I think that's why I had such a good experience with it. Why it works so effectively with me. So the question now is, is there anything left? Like, is, is it just the same ending as before? Or is there something new that's going to pop up? Let's see. Oh, there is! Sweet! To the special player who achieved this special ending. For years, I've been enamored by the ability of visual novels and games in general to tell stories in ways not possible using traditional media. Doki Doki Literature Club is my love letter to that. Games are an interactive art. Some let you explore new worlds. Some challenge your mind in brand new ways. To make you feel like a hero or a friend, even when life is hard on you. Some games are just plain fun, and that's okay too. Everyone likes different kinds of games. People who enjoy dating sims may have a heightened empathy for fictional characters, or they might be experiencing feelings that life has not been kind enough to offer them. If they're enjoying themselves, then that's all that matters. That goes for shooting, that goes for shooting games, casual games, sandbox games, anything. Preferences are preferences, and our differences are the reason we have a thriving video game industry. My own favorite games have always been ones that challenge the status quo. Even if not a masterpiece, any games that attempt something wildly different may earn a special place in my heart. Anything that further pushes the limitless bounds of, it, of it, interactive media. I extend my true gratitude to all those who have taken the time to achieve full completion. 
I hope you enjoyed playing it as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you for being a part of my literature club. Love, Dance of Vato. And it's just the same kind of, uh, this, this is it, right? You can't go beyond this point, which means that this is the end of Doki Doki Literature Club. There are a couple of things that I haven't showed in my playthrough, some Easter eggs, but those are easily searchable online. If you're curious about them, go to the Wikipedia page. They have it all listed down as well as all the secret poems and you can see exactly what the chances of getting each one of them as well as what they are. But man, my thoughts, my thoughts on this game. I almost, almost want to do a video solely dedicated to how uh, Doki Doki Literature Club builds up the scare in Act 1, the scare of, of Sayori Suicide, because that one got me so good, and I feel almost, I feel inspired to, to make something like that, to analyze what the game does in its earliest stages, to slowly build up to that final day where Sayori kills herself, because that was brilliant. This game is brilliant. Its horror is one that's super hard to do right, and it does it phenomenally. If you've watched extra, extra credits, like I have, the type of horror I'm talking about is lingering horror. Not stuff that's just jump scare, you, you jump and you're like, <laughs> oh, wow, I got scared by the game again, oh well. No, it's horror that makes you think even after the game is gone. It's the kind of stuff that sticks with you. Like, this game is a whole bunch of that. It, it's, I can't just forget about this game. It's just so well made is what I'm trying to get across here. But, as with any series, as with every series, they all must come to an end. So, I'm sad to see Doki Doki Literature gone, but at the same time, I'm also kind of happy, because there were <laughs> so many spooks and psychological scares that like, every time, from like episode 6 up to episode 10, I had to like, force myself to play the game and be all like, okay, I know it's scary, but you can do it, man. You need to do it for your viewers, for your fans, for everyone watching. And I did it. And I'm proud of myself for doing that because it wasn't easy playing through this game. It wasn't easy playing beyond uh, the end of act one. Like I really had to push myself to do that. And I'm glad I did because there's so much stuff here that's brilliant. And I, that's, that's my thoughts on the game. It's just really, really well done. The main thing I like about it is how deep it can get. You can play through the entire game without noticing the files that are located in the games directory because the only reason I uh, thought to do that was because my mate of mine was like, okay, make sure you keep track of those files because some stuff pops up now and then. And, you know, I took a look, and as I played through, stuff did pop up. And that just added to the immersion, to the experience of Doki Doki. And that's just another way in which it's so effective at being psychological horror, at having lingering effects on everybody who plays it. Anyway, it's about time I end this episode, so thank you all for watching this series. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, because I know I enjoyed it a lot. The next series, I'm happy to announce, will be The Walking Dead, so I'm pretty hyped to play it. I hope you're hyped to watch and see what goes on, and I'll see you all over there. So, I'll see you all in the next video.